Let's talk about Geelong, who finished third with a record of 16 and 6 and a percentage of 126.7%, and they were eliminated in the preliminary final. What did you make of Geelong? Yeah, they were sort of like, <laughs> well, they did what you expected them to, but similar to Brisbane, they've sort of been that team assaulting it for a while, but they just haven't capitalised on their opportunities come finals. They'll, like, they'll either go out in straight sets or make a prelim or grandy and lose. Mm. There's no sort of... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a we'll weird show, one. The show their record in finals is quite poor, but like they're getting to finals and just not yeah. quite being good enough in, in a lot of respects. There's a funny narrative around Geelong this year where it was like, oh, Geelong are the, the best team. You wait till Geelong comes good. And then in the finals, they shit the bed and everyone's like, wait a minute, you were shit. And now everyone's written them off that they're going to be rebuilding and stuff like that. So I, That's a stretch. I think that is a stretch. I think, I think um, I'm think i very wary of them going into next year as well. Mm. We'll talk about some positives. Uh, any that come to mind for Geelong? Jeremy Cameron was a nice pickup. He slid in pretty seamlessly when he was healthy. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't affect Hawkins too much. Like Hawkins was still able to be Hawkins. That four line in general works yeah. well with all three of them. He, he kicked 39 yeah. from 15 and Hawkins kicked 56. Yeah. So that's an outstanding year. I think Hawkins came runner up in the Coleman, I think. Yeah. Mackay only won it with like 58 or something. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Cam Guthrie probably yep. went up another level again after an All-Australian year last year. He was very, very good again. Yep. Um, a couple of exciting wins. They smashed Richmond. Um, an exciting win over the Dogs where they won after the siren. Um, excuse me. There's um, The positives, though, do kind of dry mm. up, though. I mean, and there's probably Cats fans. Like the positives are more expectations than positives. That's what I, I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, to look like one of the best teams all year for a lot of it, Actually, that's a positive. They they generally look like the best team in the comp yeah. at times, um, but ultimately the, the way they fell away in the finals was yeah. extremely disappointing. And, and you're it's right. too much of a pattern with them, I think. Like the falling off in finals. Yeah, mind you, I, I think in nineteen and twenty they had reasonable campaigns. Yeah. They lost to Richmond both years. And nineteen Richmond and were... twenty sort of redeemed that overall Richmond. Uh, sorry, Geelong a shit in finals narrative. But <laughs> other than nineteen and twenty, from like about twenty fifteen to now, mm. they've bombed in finals really yeah i suppose even in nine in 20 they lost more finals than they won actually i think that's the same in 19 too but still mm. they only got like they it was only richmond that was in between between them and a flag both years yeah. i think i think they would have that's redeeming for they would have smashed yeah. along i uh, sorry smashed the giants in 19 i reckon yeah. and in 20 obviously that was the grand final so um negatives it's hard to say where the upside to keep them where they are is going to come from now like because even like you said Guffrey's growing his game how much more can he add to his game at this yeah, point really like 30, 30 most one. of the other guys are on the downside rather than the upside mm-hmm. it's hard to see where that upside to keep the team where it's at is going to come as their old boys fall off yeah yeah the thing is with Geelong though in terms of list management they don't really have any trouble just talking players into coming to join yeah. them so other than Travis Boak I think was their biggest target they failed to get but because they um, get a lot of the regional Victoria boys. That's sort of mm, their big lure. That's right. Um, yeah. So, uh, admittedly, some of the players they've recruited in the last couple of years, Higgins, um, Smith was pretty good. Jack Stephen didn't really get on the park. But if they, in theory, they could just keep doing this for a uh, while, you know. But I think once Selwood retires and danger. in particular, danger, yeah, I, I think there will need to be a shuffle. But they might go about it differently. I think they might trade in. I, I don't think they're too concerned about their lack of youth. Uh, um, yeah, even those comments Steve Hocking were making about Jordan Clark, I was reading just before the party sort of seemed like, yeah, you got to earn your way in. Yeah, yeah. It was a funny situation there with Jordan Clark. Um, I guess that's kind of a negative. They got older. <laughs> <It's a laughs> period. They, they like traded out Clark and Constable got delisted. Um, a lot of talk about Clark Constable. I have no idea if he's actually any good. It's I think he's things. one of those guys that kills like your VFL, your waffle, but at mm-hmm. AFL level just doesn't have the attributes. That's right, that's right. Um, and then they traded... Fort and basically got Segler, so just added yeah. two years to the, the age. <laughs> um, but anyway, in negatives, I just say the eighty-three point loss in a prelim. That's that was insane. Yeah. Again, on the receiving end of an amazing team. Yeah. Uh, Tom Stewart's injury. I think that was a bit of a turning point for them. Um, it doesn't fully explain their form, but he was probably their best player this year. He's a pillar, a very big pillar form. Like yeah, similar to the Caleb Daniel, like we were saying for the Bulldogs, that guy when he's playing well, they're playing well. Like mm. when Tommy Stewart's getting that. Yep. 25, 30 posies with some intercept marks and hitting people jong uh, up and about usually. Yep, fully agree with that. Um, another negative, their final round comeback loss. So they were 44 points up against Melbourne and lost by, after the siren, by a few <laughs> points. 
Uh, it's always close between Melbourne and Geelong. They always yeah. got to have an interesting, that's for sure. I mean, Geelong looked listless in the finals. Like, even against GWS, I wasn't impressed. They lost to Port Adelaide. Got smashed by Port Adelaide, actually. Smashed by Melbourne. But it almost makes you forget they were 44 points up against Melbourne in round 23. So it's almost like a bit of a sliding doors moment. If they finish that game strongly, do they go into the finals with a different mindset? Mm. They, would, they would have finished top, I think. Possibly. I think they would have finished top. Maybe Port would have finished top. I, yeah. can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it would have been a home sort of home yeah. final in probably Perth or Adelaide. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a... That was a blow, I think. They lost three times to Melbourne this year. Yeah. Um, negatives, they loaded up with experience and another year passes with no flag. And uh, their ruck situation gen- generally wasn't great with Stanley losing his spot and yeah. they don't really have... You know, a great ruck set up there. So. Segler probably fixes that a bit. Yeah, I, I think there's a plus there. He's not a world beater, but he's all right. He's a good steady ruck. Like, he's your Callum Sinclair, mm. Hickey, like your mid-tier. Yep. Former Eagles. Nah, not former <laughs> Eagles, but yeah. I just realized those two I'd listed were by former Eagles. former Eagles that joined <laughs> Sydney. Mark Seavey, Jason Ball. <laughs> uh, how'd you grade along? I'm thinking a C minus, a similar logic to Brisbane, really, like, they got to finals, but you're judging this team on their performance in finals, not getting there. Yeah, yeah, I, I think a C. I think to a prelim is about par for them. Mm. It, it's it was more disappointing than the would suggest though. The, yeah. the way they went out, I think we summed it up. Um, they lost Clark. They brought in Segler, as we touched on, and no first rounder. But they got picks 22, 30, 32, 34. So uh, plenty to trade up with if they wanted to. Are you in the camp of thinking Chris, uh, Chris Scott is under pressure? Definitely. Well, yeah. if he isn't, he should be, I think. Because yeah. like, he's been there for like 10, 12 years or however long he's been there at this mm. point. Mm. And he he got the one flag off the Bombers team, Bomber Thompson team, Coattails. Mm. And then from there, he sort of got them to the finals, but disappointed in finals, as I've mentioned. So yeah. I think he's this year, they sort of go, yeah, you got to do something in finals or we're going to start looking at other options. I don't know if I'm of the opinion that we should sack coaches for just being extremely successful but not winning flags you know mm. what I mean because you, you put yourself in that scenario that many times eventually you'll peg one yeah and yeah I, mm. I, I tend to think he, uh, he's pretty safe to be honest realistically he's like who you, realistically who they replace him with but he does sort of I think they need to get that fire lit under him a bit yeah yeah sort of go yeah you've been here a while you're doing your job but we want a flag. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's just, like, as we say, we're graded at a C. Yeah. So that's why I think, you know, it's, he's, he's coasting. He's all right. Um, I, ju- I just think it, it's strange to sack a coach for making a prelim. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It just doesn't, doesn't it sit right with me, to be honest. It is kind of counterintuitive, but yeah. Yeah. 